Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our own moon and the recent discovery that may be able to finally explain why our moon has two different faces. It has two different sides that are actually somewhat different. Let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So this research comes to us from the Macau University of Science and Technology in China, and it's a research that also connects to what's happening on the moon, on the far side of the moon, where China currently has um, an explorer known as Chang'e 4, that for the past few months has been exploring and uh, trying to investigate various rocks on the moon. Now, what it discovered is that, well, as we suspected, the moon has experienced a very large impact in its history because it discovered these rocks that are known as magma rocks that came from within the moon. And the only explanation here is that, well, it's probably something that collided into the moon and then released these rocks from within the moon, uh, landing them on the surface. And that's kind of what we've discovered. But what exactly was it that collided with the moon? And this is what this research tries to answer. But before we answer this question, let's take a look at the moon's surface here and compare the two sides. So this is the side that we see. This is known as the near side of the moon. Um, and as you can see, it has a lot of uh, unusual dark patches. And also, uh, by the way, these are called Maria. And um, also a lot of um, areas that don't have a lot of impact here. This is because once upon a time, this was all molten lava. Then you look at the other side. And it's all filled with craters, a lot of craters, and it looks almost entirely like a completely different object altogether. There's also a very large crater right here. And so, uh, because of all of this, we've always assumed that something must have collided with the moon and changed its surface. And the other really interesting thing about the moon is that back in 2012, NASA had a really interesting mission known as GRAIL that studied the unusual gravitational anomalies on the surface of the moon to basically try to explain why is it that the moon's um, actual gravitational shape or technically speaking, the actual gravity well is very bumpy. It's not really uh, spherical as on Earth. In other words, if you were to try to assume an orbit around the moon, um, a circular orbit, eventually you would slowly lose the orbit and fall onto the surfaces of the moon. That's because there are a lot of bumps in the gravitational well. It would be a good video for another day, but you can also check out Scott Manley's video that he recently made that explains this really well. And so what these missions discovered is that the far side right here has um, almost like a several kilometer thick extra layer of rocks that um, most likely came from this side right here. And all of this together kind of adds up to a very interesting story that um, may explain what really happened to the moon. And the simulations from the Macau University also add to the story explaining exactly what may have occurred. So having run 360 simulations, they discovered that there's only maybe one or two that fit the scenario really well and created the moon that we see in our night skies. What they discovered is that if an object very similar in size to Ceres, which is uh, the dwarf planet in the um, asteroid belt, slightly smaller than Ceres actually, probably around 780 kilometers in diameter, moving at a speed of about 6,200 um, meters per second, or about six kilometers per second, toward the moon, toward the uh, near side of the moon, collided with it, it would create the effects that we're observing on the surface. So here we're going to try to simulate this. Um, we're going to essentially recreate this collision. And um, what this resulted in was literally a tremendously large explosion with almost like a tsunami of rocks that traveled across the moon. And for the most part, um, let's, let's see if we can actually create this here. Um, this shock wave will deposit all of these rocks on the other side of the moon. So this is the best explanation we have so far. So this is probably what happened um, with the surface here. It's a little bit slow because the co my computer is trying to process all of this information. But here you can see all of these rocks will now start uh, traveling across the moon and will hopefully get deposited on the other side. Now, it's possible that we're not going to get exactly this effect, 
But when they ran the simulation, um, like I said, over 300 times, the result was practically identical to the real moon. Now, um, a lot of these rocks that we have might not get deposited there, but we're going to accelerate time just to see if it happens. And the other um, thing that this actually explains is why certain rocks on the moon have a slightly different composition of isotopes, specifically potassium, phosphorus, and a few other rare um, earth elements that are different from earth. The only explanation here would be if the moon actually received a collision from something else that brought those isotopes and this would be explained by this collision. All right, so I wasn't really able to um, deposit these on the other side, but they might still come back and land on the opposite side here. Let's see if this happens. I, I see some of them coming closer and closer and there we go. Okay, it's just a few. So we're gonna accelerate this just to see what happens. But basically this is how they explain how the surface of the moon is so different and what happened to the far side of the moon after the collision. And uh, some of the previous assumptions were that, well, maybe our moon has a different side because um, early in the creation of the solar system when the moon was just made, there were two moons that Earth had and they both kind of slowly combined into one. And um, it's a good assumption, but the thing is it doesn't explain the differences in um, compositions of potassium isotopes, for example. It also doesn't really explain why there are magma rocks detected on the other side of the moon by the Chang'e 4 mission. And so uh, a lot of this can definitely be explained by this collision with uh, a dwarf planet like or a series like object um, that collided with the near side of the moon. And as you can see here, well, this is actually a relatively accurate recreation of this collision. So a lot of the rocks here did land on the opposite side and created even more craters now. Although, as I just realized, it also pushed the moon way, way, way farther away from Earth. And so now it's no longer in orbit around Earth. And that's actually maybe a little bit of a problem because um, a collision, a straight collision with the moon would probably dislodge it entirely. So it's actually quite possible that the collision was maybe under a slight angle like this. Um, and this would possibly prevent the moon from losing the orbit around the planet Earth. So let's see if this particular collision dislodged the moon around Earth. And we're going to accelerate time here just to see where exactly the moon is going to end up. And it looks like it's still in orbit. So it was most likely not a direct face on collision. It's quite possible that the actual collision was under an angle. So in that sense, um, it's quite an interesting research. It's definitely going to help us explain what is happening on the surface of the moon and how it's different from um, planet Earth. And because we're definitely going back to the moon, at least according to NASA, by 2024, and uh, the Artemis mission will most likely um, actually help us settle on the moon finally, this is important for us to understand because potentially we might be able to discover some unusual or rare earths and rare elements on the moon that were delivered by this collision that don't exist on earth and if we discover unusual elements that might have price this will kick off a new era of exploration because everyone is going to try to make it into commercial endeavor and where there's money there's always new opportunities because i mean when you think about it most of the colonization on our planet Earth occurred because of money. It kind of drives the economy, right? It kind of drives people to explore and to create new endeavors and to create new things in less hospitable um, situations. So if we discover something really cool here, it's probably going to start a new era of human civilization. But for now, that's really all we know about the moon. We now think that this large collision brought a lot of elements and created these two sides that are different. On that note, as we discover more about the moon, I'll make sure to mention it in some of the future videos, so do subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out, and as always, bye-bye.